Okay. Do we feel ready, y'all? We can get started. Yeah. Cool. So I'm gonna do the little, the little intro, and then we could get right into the workshop, and you guys could introduce yourself. Um, so hi, my name is Kiara Cristina Ventura. I'm from the Bronx. I'm a curator. Um, and I'm super happy to, to open this space to you guys. Um, this program is in conjunction with an exhibition that I currently have up in the Bronx right now called The Living Room Kitchen, um, which is a show featuring 11 artists of color who are speaking about family and home in their work. Um, and this exhibition was simply uh, inspired by memories in the home, um, the weight specifically the living room and kitchen has in the home, um, the functions that the living room and kitchen play in the home. These are spaces of gathering. These are spaces for family. Um, they're kind of like the public, the public gathering spaces within the home. Um, and I just wanted to get into that in the exhibition um, and just also cover the beauty of the cultures that are formed within the home, uh, specifically Black and Latinx cultures um, that are formed within the home and the beautiful traditions that we have. Um, and yeah, that's just a little bit about the living room kitchen. Unfortunately, it is closed right now. But um, I'm so happy that we could still engage with the public through these virtual programs. So thank you guys for being here. Um, and shout out to the Andrew Freeman Home for supporting this. And yeah, that's a little bit about me and the exhibition. And I'm going to pass this on to Cleo and Catherine, um, who are going to teach us about cleansing the home. And I'm so excited. So. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Kiara, so much for curating this beautiful exhibition and also inviting us to come. Like, it feels really perfect to be able to speak on this. And even though, like, we don't have a chance to be together in the same room, I, like, I feel like I'm honored to give this beautiful honoring to you. Mm -hmm. um, at, during this time when you're in your home of like um, ways that you can um, really like lift the spirits that are already in your home. Thank you. So Thank you. welcome to this <laughs> workshop. Cool. And so I'm going to peace out and the floor is y'all. <laughs> Bye. 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 I'm going to mute my So we're going to just start um, by kind of getting to know each other a little bit, um, do some introductions, then we're going to hear from you about your experiences with home cleansing, and then we're going to share what we know about cleansing and plants that you can work with. And then we're going to get to start to dream up some of our own rituals and And my name is Catherine Felice. Um, I go by they, them, or Kat. And I'm one half of Abuela Taught Me. I grew up in Washington Heights and Harlem. My people are from Kiskeya Ayiti. And hey. <laughs> uh, my name is Cleopatra Tassavelli, or Cleopatra Dule. Um, I've done a good amount of work in like the Taino Two-Spirit community. Uh, my family's Dominican or from Quisqueya or IEP. Uh, and then my other side of the family is African-American. So I grew up kind of being like really in a Christian household with all these things that didn't seem Christian. Um, so learning about different types of spirituality has really helped me in my healing journey. And that's why I'm really happy to share with you all today. Yeah. Um, so... What I'm gonna ask everybody to do is write down on the chat. So click right on the bottom where it says chat. All I want you to do is write your name and pronouns and then see what questions really speak to you. So for example, when you think about spiritual cleansing, what does that mean to you? 
or where is your family from? A lot of us might be from the Caribbean, but I know that this is open to everybody. And while what Kat and I are gonna teach you all about today is Caribbean Afro Taino practices, we wanna hear where you are from as well. Um, and also, because so many indigenous cultures have different waves of spiritually cleansing, tell us what you might know about spiritual cleansing. So I'm gonna give y'all like a minute or two. You can answer one of the questions, all of the questions, but this is just kind of a way to introduce ourselves so we can know who you are. Hi, Rumi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, Estefania. We have some beautiful names on this chat. Right? <laughs> oh, so my family's from Cibao too. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kat, can you make um, Artsy Window a panelist? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, attendee. So much of our family is so secretive about our practices. It's wild. It's wild. Okay, I'm gonna start reading some of the responses. So, um, Rumi says, actually, Rumi, let's go to Stefania, um, says that she grew up in Colombia my grandmother would do spiritual cleansing as a way to cleanse negative energy and bring in positive energy and intentions into the home. Hi, my name is Falami. My heritage is African Caribbean. Parents are from Jamaica, migrated to London, UK. Oh, wow. Where I was born and lived. Um, five years ago, I moved to NL, where I am now. Where's NL? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, the Netherlands. Oh, Netherlands. Oh, wow. My experience of bringing of spirit cleansing growing up was been positive, seen as unclean. I want to embrace more positive experiences of cleaning related to my heritage. Thank you for saying Netherlands. Thank you. <laughs> Brooklyn native, Puerto Rico, WEPA. All right. Word. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but Kat, can you go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. Okay, so look, this is more <laughs> ironic than anything, but I freaking love this lady. She has helped me in her TV show. I love it so much. But this is just to talk about something a little bit more seriously. Marie Kondo has a great method of like physically cleaning the house and before we start talking about spiritually cleansing the house, I think it's really important to know that for spiritual cleansing to be effective, you must physically clean first. So anything that we do in this workshop, make sure that you cleanse your space by clearing out things that are needless, like clutter, um, things that are garbage, make sure your floor is swept. You wanna make sure you keep a clean space first before you welcome any good or positive energy or spirits in your space. Um, and we're going to talk more about this, but this is really like one of the first steps that 
we want you to do before you even consider spiritually cleansing. You're good. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And why should you cleanse the home? Um, so a lot of you have already mentioned this in your introductions to ward off negative s spirits, entities, or energy. Yes. So we know that our conscious mind is here in the human mind, the physical world, but we are constantly interacting with our realms. We're constantly interacting with the spiritual realm, with the astral plane. Um, and um, yeah, so it's important to continuously to clear our space and to check on those boundaries to keep your home feeling positive and fresh. Yes. Um, you cannot fill a cup or put water into a cup that's full, right? Um, and we're constantly going through cycles. So it's important to clear out the old um, so that you're ready to bring in new en energies into the space. And to detox air and surfaces from harm for germs, viruses, and other pathogens. So we know that um, the plants that we work with and the other cleansing items that we work with not only clear away um, the spiritual harm that can be done to us, but um, there, there's also like antiviral properties that are emitted into the air from the plants that have those healing properties, um, right? So it's not just from drinking a tea that you can get those benefits, it's also from cleansing the home. To welcome ancestors and spiritual guides who aid you in your daily life. Um, so whenever we're getting ready to, um, to enter that sacred space of our altar or of prayer or of ceremony, it's important to cleanse your space and your home so that, um, yeah, you're ready. Okay. And our homes are our temples, right? Um, so on the left, we see Cacique Panchito from Cuba. And on the right, or at least it's like my right, <laughs> um, we see um, a Budun elder who's also trans leading ceremony. Um, so our homes have, have always been spaces of connection, of family, of also ritual, of learning and growing. Um, and it's important to, to regard our homes as, as the, the sacred spaces that we are, that it is, um, as well as our bodies, right? So our homes are a reflection of our inner spiritual and physical well-being. And when should you cleanse the home? Um, definitely when you're feeling heavy at home. So you might notice that um, sometimes like the air feels thick or maybe like you're dropping a lot of things and you just can't explain it, but things feel heavy. It's usually that there's an accumulation of energy that isn't that doesn't have a place to go so it's just kind of getting stuck in your home and having a regular practice of cleansing allows for for the energy to move and to go where it needs to go next because it shouldn't stay in your home a lot of this also involves um spirits that come in and out of our spaces so when we think about energy, sometimes we use energy and spirits interchangeably. For example, if a negative person leaves your home, it's important to cleanse after they leave. Or if, say you have a bad relationship with a family member who comes over, you should cleanse after they leave. If you're in a time in your life where you've been feeling really burnt out, for example, those are spirits that are like weighing down on you. It's important to also cleanse not you don't have to cleanse necessarily like 
every second, every day, but it's important to have a regular routine of cleansing in a way that makes you feel like you have a pattern. So when you're thinking about cleansing, it shouldn't only feel do it shouldn't only happen when you feel bad or negative. It should also happen on a regular basis. It is good to cleanse every day in some way, but you can also cleanse once a week, once a month, something that gives you like a pattern. Some people even cleanse on different um, like moon phases, for example, whatever really works for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then also after um, a roommate moves out, which I think you mentioned. Um, yeah, cool. I think we touched on everything. Mm -hmm. And what are plant allies? Um, so plants are sentient be be beings, which means that, um, that they have a soul, they have a spirit, they have intelligence, just like we do. Um, and so does all life on earth, right? Because it's life. Um, and in the colonized Western point of view, um, like, um, our world is very human-centered, but when you're working with energy, when you're working with spirit, and especially if you're cleansing your home, um, it's important to acknowledge the other beings that are with you in doing this work because you're not doing it alone. And surprise, like you haven't actually ever done anything alone because we live in this beautiful interconnected web. Um, and also plants are our ancestors and they want to work with us to help us heal. Um, so in many cosmologies and even our indigenous Arawak and African cosmologies, um, plants were heroes before us humans came. Um, and tobacco, for example, um, tobacco offered itself to us to be a mediator between the human world and the spirit realm. Um, so we learn that plants are not only our ancestors, but also our teachers, and they're here to work with us. So the reason why I, as a traditional healer or curanderax, the reason why, why I say that I work with plants and don't use them is because I'm not coming at them from this like I have power over you and I'm gonna use you like a capitalistic machine like no like you're just like my friend like Cleo like we are working together um yeah and some of the plant allies that you can work with to cleanse your home that I wanted to offer are bay leaf, ruda, also known as rue um, in English, and juniper, which is also really closely related to cedar. Um, bay leaf, so the oh, spirit, uh-huh. Someone asked, are, are we okay with screenshots? I'm okay with them, are you? I'm cool with it. Okay. Yeah, sorry yeah. to interrupt. It's all good. Um, thanks for reading the the chat. I have not been keeping up with it. <laughs> <laughs> so the spirit of bay leaf is very much one of cheer and of celebration. If you like, look at a lot of um, myths from our mid from our like Mediterranean ancestors, which is like where the plant had a really big influence and where it's from, right? It's it's used in um, in like graduations, also it, like during the summertime, the time of Leo, like the time of things coming together and like being celebrated. Um, so if you wanna cleanse um, your home with bay leaf, I think it's a good moment to do that like when you're like really trying to celebrate uh, um, a transition. Um, and, it and it also offers anti-inflammatory properties and because of this um, this almost like full circle celebration energy 
that um, that it really exudes, it also draws that happy abundance towards us. And the elements that it's mostly associated with is earth and air. Um, so also something to think about. Ruda. Um, oh my God, I love Ruda so much. I mean, I love all these plants so much, but like my mom, something that she would always do is like dip it in water right and like cleanse the room in that way and like cleanse my head that way and I always felt incredibly clear afterwards it was like an ocean just washed over the room and the spirit of of who that is really one of mental clarity um and like one that really kind of also brings in psychic clarity um and with that opening it draws luck and and it's also associated with water because it has a really strong affinity to water so that is ruda and that is bay leaves and juniper juniper um is really special and i wanted to highlight especially for this call because it's important to also like be aware of the plants that grow around us and for me ruda and bay leaf are really special ancestral plants but unfortunately like they don't grow here on this land on the napa land and juniper is native to this land and it's so powerful in so many ways um the spirit of juniper it's incredibly like like it's a protector um and it's medicinal qualities and also when you work with it to cleanse your home either like through smudging it has antiviral properties so it actually like helps clear the viruses from the air because we know that's how viruses like to travel um one and, go ahead mm -hmm. finish on. i there's just a question i think we can answer. oh cool all right and it's also really helpful for grounding so if you've ever seen a juniper tree um or a cedar tree which is also like closely related to like they're like like they just cannot be moved right um they stand super strong and super firm and can grow really tall um so it also has that grounding element um and it's also associated with the earth um, i'm curious to see the questions you said someone had a question so daisy said how to source these so bay all of these are things that some of you might be able to, not all of them actually, some of you, if you go to a local botanica, you might be able to find them. However, juniper in particular, you'll need to go to a local park and they grow all around New York City. So if you go to Inwood Hill Park, for example, a lot of mm -hmm. those trees are juniper trees. You'll have to practice like some plant identification, but you can literally just take a small branch after asking permission to take that from the tree and dry it at home and burn it. With mm -hmm. bay leaf, you can go to the grocery store if you don't have a local botanica, and sometimes people use it as a seasoning. So they might have it fresh or dry. And then with, vuru, with Lula, it might be a little bit more difficult to find some local plant stores or like flower shops might have a plant that you can buy and also they would sell it in local botanicas. It's a little bit hard to find rue in like grocery stores. So just keep that in mind. When it comes to, oh, is it safe to burn juniper berries and which is best, fresh or dry? Can I, I'll answer Kava's question. Do you want to answer Wendelin's question? Yeah, okay. um, let me see where they at. <laughs> Kava, which is best fresh or dry? If it depends on how you're going to cleanse. So we're gonna talk about different methods for cleansing. If you are cleansing with smoke, you should use a dry herb or, or work with a dry plant. If you are working with a plant that is dry, there's other ways you can use work with that plant, like with sacred waters and other methods that we're going to talk about later in a second mm -hmm. don't worry and also i wouldn't recommend burning the berries um I, I like i would burn the like needles around it um 
but if you, if you want to work with the berries the way that i work with it is making an oil um yeah and so we can, can also talk an oil about berries we can talk more about like how we want you to think about working with these plants um I'm really glad that you have Ruda growing in your backyard. That's dope. Ooh, Ruta can I come over? Like, <laughs> Bob.com. Like, it's so Caribbean. It's so, like, good for you. I'm glad. All right. Um, you feel ready to move to the next one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me do this. And... Yeah, so a lot of folks have been asking about sourcing and like the way that we work and I think the way that um, a lot of our ancestors have continued to be alive is by being resourceful. So we never like want anyone to feel like they have to go out and buy something like there's, there's already so much um, like abundance in your own home or that you might have access to in community. Um, so some of the co the common home items that we wanted to touch upon also, because like a lot of us are on lockdown right now and can't really leave the house, is copal, which is a resin that um, comes to us from, from like Mexico, Central America region. Also cinnamon. You can also burn cinnamon or like physically place it in different parts. Um, sea salt. Yeah, sea salt is amazing. Rosemary. You can also work with rosemary and burn it. Um, and the sea salt, you can make um, waters out of it and work it with it in that way. Agua florida which is like a basic you just you know need to have it in your house and you can also make your own and camphor which um don't take it internally um yeah but um, it can be burned as like a uh, resin or, or also placed in water with agua florida if you don't know how to make it we can talk more about that later but you can also go to most Latinx neighborhoods and botanicas or grocery stores, even bodegas, and they usually have agua florida for sale. Mm -hmm. So for the next part, I saw a couple questions mentioning this. Ways to cleanse your home is really important. First, you have to think about what plant you want to work with, and then you can think about different ways to work with that plant. So we're going to go through a couple different ways you can work with a plant to cleanse a space or your home, but these are not all of the ways. And if you have other ways that you'd like to share, you can totally write them in the chat. You can go to the next one. So for this, cleansing waters is really, really awesome. Agua Florida is one example of a cleansing water, but if you go to a botanica, they usually have like these little tall bottles that kind of look like the bottle Agua Florida is made out of, is um, manufactured in, but there's so many different types. And it's also super easy to make your own. For me, usually in order to get the medicine from the plant you're working with, you usually need to use some type of alcohol. So for example, you can take one part water, one part alcohol. People like to use vodka, rubbing alcohol. You can even use clear rum. Um, and then you put your plants in that mixture. And over the course of a few days, you strain out the plants. And then you have this beautiful water with medicine from the plants that um, you worked with. And that's one really effective way to work with cleansing waters. Um, so making your own is such a great option, but buying them or buying Agua Florida is also a great option too. Um, when we think about water, we also think about the ocean and the ocean is a cleansing place. And it's also somewhere that a lot of water signs especially might go to heal from distress. So when we think about the ocean, that's why we would use cleansing waters. 
Um, in order to physically cleanse the space, working with cleansing waters, you would need to, for example, you can take it out of the bottle, put it on your hand and just sprinkle it around, okay? Or you can put it on a wash rag and physically cleanse the space, like, wa like wiping down counters, wiping down the floor. You can put it in your mop water and, and like physically scrub the floor with it. But one thing to keep in mind is that you don't like, how do I say? You don't have to necessarily like scrub the place down. If you sprinkle it down, you can also sprinkle water on yourself. For example, one story that I, a friend told me was that like, they had a grandpa of theirs that passed away and he was like not a very good energy in the house. And like every summer the house would smell like tobacco and he like always smoked cigars inside the house. And she was like, I really don't like this smell. And like, I feel like really heavy every time the smell comes up. So not only did she physically cleanse the space of his stuff, but then she took Florida water, put it into her, her like rag and then like scrub the walls clean. And that really cleansed the space, not only of his energy, it also helped him like move on to the next plane. So that was one way that she like really used Florida water in a positive way to cleanse her space after she was grieving, honestly. You can go to the next one, Kat. Um, for smudging, smudging is super popular now, um, but it's not necessarily the only or the best way to cleanse. There are a lot of different plants to smudge with that aren't necessarily sage, which is very popular. Um, in order to smudge, you would use a dried plant. You can use most dried plants if it's not making your house super smoky or like, like you're coughing around it, it's usually fine. A lot of popular plants that people are using or working with are sage, um, tobacco, cedar, palo santo, but those are not the only ones that we, that you can smudge with. And we put in different things in this presentation to show you that you don't have to just use sage and you can also get things locally sourced that's way better for the environment and for the earth. Um, in order to smudge, what you would do, you would take your bundle um, and you could put it on fire, but you don't want the fire to keep burning. You want to be able to blow out the fire and then you can kind of see embers. Um, and then you're fumigating the space with that smoke, with an intention for what you're trying to get rid of in your space or what you're trying to bring in into your space. Um, one thing I would say is that if you were smudging a house or a room, you should go to the four corners. In a lot of indigenous cultures, we think about the four directions. So you can literally go to the four corners of a room and smudge and focus in each of those corners for a few seconds. Um, it's also, important to keep in mind that, that when you have a bundle of herb, it will burn very quickly. You often don't really need to burn the entire bundle at once. Usually people might burn bundles if they're on the go, like if they're outside. But if you're inside your home, you can literally take apart some of the string from your bundle. You can take a leaf or two and put it in a dish and put that on fire. You usually don't need more than a couple leaves to get what your job, like to get your intention set for your space. We want to make sure that you're not being wasteful because especially in times like now, like you really want to be sparse with your medicine. It might be hard to get it in a few weeks, right? So don't just like burn through a bundle of sage just cause. Use a couple leaves and then start from there. You usually don't need more than that. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, and and also on, and like over, there's, we can also have a tendency to overuse medicine in this society, right? And, and that's also like, for example, how like tobacco turned into a toxic plant and a disease here in this, 
society is because of overuse of the medicine. So also think about that as like a way to honor the plant and its lineage. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, okay, so this is like really a great first step for a lot of people that are like, I don't know what cleansing is. I did not grow up with it. I don't know how to do it. Growing your own plants is a beautiful first step for getting your house cleansed and offering your plant spirits something to have them do this wonderful thing with you, which is cleansing your space and asking good spirits to come into your space. A couple tips if you would like to have your plant do this work. First of all, plants always do this. So plants always cleanse your space. Like even scientifically, we can think about plants that hold in CO2 from the air. They get pollution out of the air, like physically, but also spiritually, they're here working with us. People are happier when they're around plants. Like when you're in green spaces, like your spirit is lifted. Like plants are always doing this work and like it's just up to us to have that intention to work with them and um, keep that in mind as you have a, something as simple as a house plant. Um, so a couple tips, keep your plant near a window. Uh, you want it to absorb as much sunlight energy as possible, especially for plants that do need high light energy. Um, and make sure it's living in a place that's going to thrive. Having plants that are dying in your space is not good for your space. So make sure whatever plant that you have in your space, that you are actually really taking care of it and not letting it like slowly shrivel into nothing. Because then it's not really working with you and you're not really working with it. Um, you can also talk with your plant. You can tell your plant like its worries and hopes. It's proven that like plants do better when you physically talk with it, even if it sounds or like feels like silly, it's not. It really helps the plant grow and it really gets the burden off of your shoulders because plants have this purification ability to take in the things that we give it and to purify it. Um, and then you should be listening to your plant's needs by giving it the things that it needs, like water, sunlight, um, low sunlight, if, if it's not you know, a highlight plant. Um, and one practice that's really beautiful is if you plant a seed from the start, and that really helps remind us of like, the gratitude that we have for life, you know, the cycle of life. Um, thinking about that is a really important step also if you decide to grow a plant from its little itty bitty baby stage. The last step is um, placing physical boundaries. So this is like the last kind of way that people can use, but this is one of the things that I do the most personally um, placing physical boundaries is simple, but it's also a really beautiful thing to do. So, for example, in different indigenous cultures, you can see people who make prayer ties of tobacco and they hang it over their door. Or in the Caribbean, you could see, like in this photo, people hang gin not ginger, garlic all over their door, which is a purifying substance, right? Um, and also warding off all this negative energy. Garlic does so much work in the body if you have garlic tea or if you have garlic in your food, but thinking about it just physically placed and not ingesting it also wards off those negative energies and negative spirits. Um, when we place dried plants by a doorway, it um, wards these, these things off like garlic. Um, and as, a la as another step, if you do have the space, you can literally grow a plant outside of your doorway um, or like on a pathway if you have access to that. So if you're like in Brooklyn and you have like, you know, the staircase that goes up into your building, y'all can decorate that with plants and like have that energy of the, have the energy of the plants purifying the people who walk into your house. Um, you can also do this, for example, with salt. I love to take salt and sprinkle it on the floor of my doorways to really make sure that anyone who comes into my space 
has intention to be good with good with me um and there's different herbs that you can use to either put it in a bundle hang it on top of your door you can even make small altars by your doorways um and also i say doorways a lot but doorways and windows are great places to put herbs and spirit and, and um different altars because that's where a lot of spirits tend to enter so when you have doorways and windows that are open if, especially if they're open a lot you should definitely make sure you protect those entryways because those are entryways into your space that you should want to protect um yeah so once you cleanse your space then um it's pretty much open right for uh, for new life to come and for new energies to be filled so it's important to think about protecting your space and one way to do that is to set emotional and spiritual boundaries um yeah, just like really practical, right? Like, what do you want to be let in? What do you not want to be let in? Ooh, hey, puppy. <laughs> just need to say hi to my nephew who just came in the picture. <laughs> um, I also really, really like working with black obsidians and other protective stones and I like play and see them around my home the same way that um, I would place like plants around my home, right? Um, and, and in my teachings, like black isn't bad. Um, I know that in like a lot of spiritual communities, there's this talk of like white is good and like black is bad and no, just like forget anyone ever told you that, right? Because um, so when I think of black and, and also in my teachings, um, it's it's all encompassing. It's it's the void. It's Orphan. creation. It's yeah. It's where energy c comes from. Um, so it it does a really amazing job at like at, at holding things and at. And, and of like transmuting that, of like creating new life from that. So like when you think of space, right? When you think of origin, think of black. Um, uh, one person asked, where do you source your crystals? Where do I source my crystals? Good question. Um, so with the black obsidians that I have, they were gifted to me. Um, yeah, so a lot of crystals that I have are gifts from teachers, from elders. Um, I also like, I've always been a person that like is outside and like, I just hear, like I hear the plants and like the stones and I like, I hear their song and you know, like, so, so I can also take them home with me, um, you know, so. For example, going to the ocean and if there's like a seashell that you feel an affinity to, that's also somewhere that you can start. Um, yeah, so also like just being conscious of like the stones that are already um, around you because it's like the stones are the bones of the earth and um, so they're right under beneath our feet. Was there another question? With, oh, I was just gonna add on to your answer. No, there was Yeah, one. for sure. Um, with crystals, a lot of times people wanna be very specific about like what crystals they wanna work with. But like there are stones and rocks all around us that are the little grandmothers of the earth. So you don't necessarily need to find black obsidian to do this work you can find a rock that is sacred to you in the park outside and put that on your altar or in your space um, if you do want to work with a specific crystal you can buy them from local crystal shops local botanicas i think it's always best to support black owned businesses caribbean owned businesses latinx owned businesses um, native owned businesses so if you are going to purchase a crystal or do that um, as a way to source your 
crystals, try to buy from somebody who's in your community. Yeah, thank you so much for adding that. Yes, for sure. Um, and then of course, as we talked about, hanging protective plants in our home. Um, right now, um, or like for a long time actually, there's a snake root that's hanging above um, one of my altars. Um, yeah, so like having them in your home. Um, and also remembering that we are on um, stolen land um, and just like have gratitude and give offerings to the spirits of the land. It's so, like the same way that when you move into a new apartment, like you wanna cleanse your home, you also wanna honor the energies that have been here before you have. Um, and um, yeah, and with those good intentions, um, you might find that sp spirits want to work with you and want to help protect you because like, you're being conscious of the histories. Um, and creating consistent rituals for cleansing. So also like getting into a rhythm, right? And like Cleo said before, some people feel comfortable um, doing cleansings around like the moon cycles. Um, maybe for you, like you have a daily ritual and then you have a weekly, virtual and then you have a monthly virtual um and just having like some sort of consistency which i admit is like sometimes hard um especially with like waning moods and mental health um but consistency um is also a really great part of protection because then like the spirits that you work with are like also in that same rhythm of protecting your space. Oh, you're muted. So sorry. So the next part is really the part where we would like you to think about how you can create your own ritual. So the most important part of any ritual is intention. Whether you have the fancy herb or not, you need to be able to have intention to work with the plant that you choose, okay? And that really that plant also chooses you. A lot of plants will not do the job you need it to do if you did not ask it permission first. So make sure that you ask for the work that you need and the permission to work with that plant and cohabitate with that plant if you choose to work with that plant. But let's go to the next slide. This is gonna be a small activity for you. Um, basically, when we think about intentions, we think about the situations that we find ourselves in on a, in our daily lives. So whether you just had a breakup, whether you just had a negative interaction with someone or a bad day, or um, maybe you wanna introduce new spirits into the space or clear out spirits because you just moved into a new room or a new house, okay? Um, and you can also even have the intention of making a ceremony or ritual around sleeping and waking up. So you can have like a daily thing that you can do every single day. Um, we mentioned Rue Juniper and Bay, but we also have several different plant allies, minerals that we can use like salt. So the plant ally section, don't limit yourself to that. There's many other plants that you can work with that you might have in your own house. And then when it comes to the ritual section, you think of your intention, you think about the plant you hope to work with, and then you think about the ritual that you choose. Um, so thinking about whether you wanna make a cleansing water, whether you want to grow your own plants, whether you wanna smudge with that plant, or whether you wanna place physical boundaries around your house. This is really important to think about in these three steps as a starting point for making a ritual. Um, but that's, this is not like the only way to make a ritual, obviously, but this is just our guide to help you create your own um, format to create a ceremony or ritual.
Um, and also thinking about how consistent you want to do this. You can think about whether you want to do this daily, weekly, monthly, for the full moon, um, different times of your bodily cycles even. Um, all of these things can really work. Um, so you can go to, actually no, stay on this side. So right now I'm going to play some music and I would like y'all to take five minutes Choose one thing from each of these columns or create your own and you can share. We would love for you to share the ritual that you created in the chat section. So we're going to do this for five minutes. You can write this in a notebook if you don't want to share or you can type it out if you do. Okay. I would love to hear from as many of you as possible. At the end of this, we'll do a little meditation and uh, I see a lot of the questions in the Q&A section. So we'll get to those two at the end as well.
Yes. One more minute. some really beautiful rituals so I'm gonna read out a couple cat you can read out a couple if you like if you'd like um, so for the example as a ritual I said that if I had a hard day I would probably use rue because rue is just such a spirit lifter um, so I would take rue put it in water and then put the water all around my house and especially on my bed. But when I see all of your examples, I love them. 
So one person said that they would use mugwort as it grows locally. Mugwort is really easy to find. It's also very invasive in New York City. So if you see mugwort, pull it out by the roots because it's taking mad space from native plants. It's also a great medicine plant. So please take it <laughs> if you see it. Um, and it's an amazing cleanser. It, they also said they would use bay and juniper and use cleansing water to spray around the doorways and windows every week. I love that. Kat, do you want to read one? Yeah, so many of these are so creative. Uh, ooh, okay. Sabrina says, I think I would like to create a ritual surrounding my cycle, so maybe ovulation or at the beginning of my period. I would like to focus the intention around my womb power and fertility to bring abundance into my life. I would say I would use bay leaves and maybe cinnamon. If you know of any other herbs that maybe are connected to fertility or the womb, I would love to hear. Yes, that's amazing. Um, so Falami mentioned um, mugwort and mugwort has a really close affinity to the moon. Um, so I would suggest maybe like experimenting with mugwort. Um, and it could also be a really powerful herb to like work with at the beginning of your cycle when you're starting menstruation because that's like when we're entering our internal winter time, our internal like full moon. Um, and mugwort um, also like loves traveling between realms. So like it's just always coming into my dreams. And you might find that when you're working with mugwort, your dreams, um, your visions, Will also become clearer. So I would suggest working with mugwort for your cycle. Yeah. One person said to honor the beginning of the new season, spring, I would choose to take a stab at growing my own lavender plant from seed. And I'm hoping yes. to build a relationship with them once they flower and use my own lavender and cleansing space. I love that you took into account that you can do things seasonally. If you do something for the spring, winter, fall, and um, spring, winter, fall, and summer, <laughs> that means that you can really honor the equinoxes and honor all the seasons in a way that's really grounding. So a lot of the times in indigenous cultures, when we celebrate our seasons, that's like basically better than Christmas. So I totally support you celebrating some based off of the season. Kat, do you have another one you want to read? Mm, okay, let me see. Um, bum, bum, bum. Okay, Rumi says, my partner and I practice cleansing baths, breaths with rue in its water form. It's really helpful to me for grounding. I would want to incorporate more rue into my sleep hygiene. I recently began taking more naps when I'm having a particular erratic mental health day. I want to safeguard against this being an escapist practice, for example, sleeping for mental health fortification instead of avoiding my thoughts. Perhaps prior to a nap, I'd smudge. Mm, I like that. You also added in taking cleansing breaths. <sighs> it's so important to breathe. Yeah. Uh, um, I also see that some folks said, uh, when you relocate or change your living situation, you might want to drink bay leaf tea and burn leaves with intentions written on them. Bay is an amazing plant because since the leaf is so big, you can often like use a pencil and literally write out your them. And then when you burn them, releasing that intention in the air um, and also drinking tea depending on what herbs you're using or you're working with, uh, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And Artsy Windows says... Uh, oh, go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead, you read it. Oh, it's kind of my freezing or, yeah, my connection is freezing, so. Oh, I see. Sorry if I didn't hear something. Okay, cool. Um, says... I want to incorporate Florida water when physically cleaning my home. Every time I water my plants, I want to practice thanking them and speaking to them. From moments where I practice breath work, I light candles for all the good vibes and smells. I usually light a candle when I shower. Yes. Okay, so water and fire all happening together. Love it. 
is definitely such a powerful cleansing um, element. So I'm glad that you're using a candle in your in your rituals. Mm -hmm. uh, I also see one person said, I choose to smudge the air with sage daily at bedtime and release tension and doubt and externalities to liberate my imagination, to dream and connect with the subconscious. Dreaming is a really powerful way to divinate and to get in touch with yourself. So if you have a ritual that cleanse your space before bed, you'll probably sleep better, longer, and more soundly and you could be able to connect with your dream state a little bit more. So I love that that person's doing that. One person, they love mugwort. All right, let's just do one, like one or two more. How do you feel, Kat? Mm, yeah, that feels good. I'm reading through some of the... I'll do my last one, and I'll do my last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I don't know which ones are left. <laughs> um, the most recent one. Hey guys, uh, did get a chance. Oh no, that's an introduction one. Okay. Um, oh, for my intention, I plan to ground myself with using juniper and huda dips in Florida water and cleanse around my family home once a month. Nice, I love that. Um, so I'm so glad that so many people shared out their ritual ideas. Um, we're gonna move on to a more quiet space. Um, Kat, do you want music at this time for your meditation or no? Um, no, I'm good. Um, yeah, also in the Q&A, someone asked, and I'm wondering if you might know this, Cleo, do you know of a resource to learn about the different properties of burned herbs? Oh, and, and I think by resource, they, um, she means like books or videos or um, things. I'm going to look up a book that is really straightforward and I'm going to drop it in the chat during meditation. Cool. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. So... Mm, okay, one last question. My abuela used to put cups of water in the windowsill. Do you know anything about what this is? Yes, my abuela did that too. I do that too. Um, one of the main reasons why I put cups of water on the windowsill uh, is for an ancestral offering. Um, and then yeah, so ancestral offerings, and then also um, as like as like a well, as a protective well. So if you want to look at the cup of water on the windowsill, like um, being a well in which any negative energy that comes through the window just kind of sinks into it and becomes transmuted by the water. Um, that's also another way to work with a protective element of water. Is there anything you want to add, Cleo? Um, you know, uh, no, actually, I think, I think you got it. Cool. That's exactly okay. why I was Nice. So I didn't get to see everyone's beautiful faces, but thank you so much for coming. Um, before we close the space that we made together. I just want to thank everyone for coming. And if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. And we'll start to take some cleansing breaths together. So if you want to breathe from your stomach, exhale, one, two, three, four. Again, breathe from your heart. Exhale, one, two, three, four. You can breathe more regularly now. And if you're sitting, feel your pelvis touching the chair, or touching the floor. Feel yourself grounded, grounded on this earth. 
Feel your spine send down a line that reaches down through the floorboards, down to the street, through the ground, through the rocks, crystals, and worms, and even further till it reaches the center of the earth. And we drop down here. And we know that everything is being supported by the earth. So we feel comfortable releasing and transforming and from this energy. Just going to come back up as we continue breathing. Up through the caves, the soil, and the rocks, through the building, up our feet, thighs, and into our pelvis once again as a deep red energy of the earth fills our creative center. And with this protective energy, we go forward knowing that we have, a, our, we have the ability to care for ourselves, care for each other, that there is abundant life and care, and we can choose to protect it. Take another deep breath. Send that energy through the screen to everyone who joined the space. If you feel you have more to give, send some to your neighbor. Send some around your block. Send some to your city, beyond borders, beyond walls. Break them down, actually, because we don't need them. Send them to the rest of the world. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Slowly, at your own time, you can return. Thank y'all so much for coming. Hey everybody. Um, so if you have any questions, you can hang out with us. I see a couple in the Q&A section.